Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, we are doing a special thing up here in the orchard, doing a quick lesson for kids on fruit trees. Let's get busy. So a friend of mine, Miss Gallagher, is a teacher and uh, she asked me to do a lesson on fruit trees. And so hi, hi class and everybody else who's tuning in, um, wanted to walk through and show you about fruit trees. Now, when you think of fruit, do you have a favorite fruit? Um, I know that some of the fruit that I like are mangoes. I like cherries. I like apples. I like bananas. I like a special kind of fruit called a pomegranate. I have lots of different types of favorite fruit, and I'm sure that you do too. Maybe something came right to your mind when you, when you were thinking about that. And it turns out that lots of fruit, and most of the fruit that you buy at the store, grows on trees. Some trees get really, really tall, sometimes 20 or 30 or even 40 feet tall, and some are very, very short, like some of the trees that you see here. And so I want to talk through what um, some of the different types of trees that there are, how fruit trees work. So we're going to take a look at some of those things. So you've probably learned in your class uh, and in your studies that, fr that trees and plants work a little bit different than people and animals. They get planted in the ground or in some sort of soil and they send out roots into that soil. And when the sun ra like shines on them, they're able to then photosynthesize that sunlight and help to turn it into food for the plant through photosynthesis with a substance called chlorophyll. They get nutrients and moisture and water from inside the ground and they pull that up to feed the rest of the plant. Something that they also do is that out of the air, you may have heard before that plants breathe carbon, diox or carbon dioxide. And that's something that we breathe out. So when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide and plants then take that in and go, and then those plants release oxygen through their leaves and that puts oxygen back in the environment for us to breathe. That's totally true, but something interesting, the reason why these plants are able to get so big is because they um, take the carbon out of that carbon dioxide and they use that carbon to grow big and tall. And so that's how plants actually can grow is they use that carbon free, pull it right from the air and use it to grow really, really big and tall. But plants are really fascinating things in how they can grow in so many different ways, so many different shapes. Even as you look around this orchard here with me, you'll see that we have a bunch of different fruit trees. And of the 60 something fruit trees and plants that we have here, every one of them looks so different. This banana plant, for example, looks so unique compared to the avocado next to it. And then you look back here and you see this uh, citrus fruit has some kind of tangerines on it. And then here's a persimmon plant and every one of these looks so different and yet they all work generally the same. Having that sunlight beat on their leaves, they photosynthesize it, they take in the carbon off of the carbon dioxide and they blow out oxygen. And that's, um, that's a wonderful thing in a partnership that we have with these plants. We keep them breathing and they keep us breathing. <laughs> And some people love to grow plants to look at the beautiful flowers that they grow or they just like seeing the green. And I like all of those things too. But one of the things that I really love about plants in the orchard here is that my plants grow food. Well, one of the fun things that there is about planting your own fruit trees or your own vegetables is that you can watch them grow. And once the fruit has gotten ready, you can come out and you can pick one off and you can taste it. And that's an awful lot of fun to be able to go out and something that you've helped to grow is now ready to be harvested. Like you might notice these bananas up here that I have growing and in another month or two, these bananas are going to be ready to cut off and to eat. Isn't that interesting? That's a banana plant, and this is where bananas come from. So I understand it, ba bananas are one of the most commonly eaten fruits in the world, and so it's neat to see how one grows. Those are the, started out as flowers, and now they're fruit, and they're gonna get bigger, and then they're gonna be ready to come down. Um, I wanna talk with you about a couple of differences, the two main kinds of trees that there are, deciduous and evergreen, and so I wanna talk about what those things are. 
Well, plants, some plants grow better in other places of the world than others. And so each part of the world has its own types of plants that grow. And when it comes to fruit trees, that's true too. Um, in North America, where we live, most of the areas of North America can grow what are called deciduous trees. Deciduous trees are like this nectarine behind me or this cherry tree behind me here. And what a deciduous tree is, is that the leaves fall off in the fall and winter time. That's why they call it fall, because the leaves fall off. And what that does is that gives the, the plant and tree a chance to fall asleep and take a nap and rest up. So that way, once it's the spring comes and it warms up, it's able to wake up, it puts out beautiful flowers, and those flowers get pollinated by those little bees and hummingbirds and other pollinating insects. And then that becomes fruit, and that's what grows. That little fertilized flower will turn into a fruit and it'll get bigger until it's time to pick. And so a deciduous tree is what now? A tree where the leaves fall off. Now, an, an example of like an evergreen tree, a tree that is uh, green all the time, all year round, that's usually found in more tropical places. So we have uh, things like that in Southern California and some of the warmer states. Um, and those are things like avocados, which make tasty guacamole, or like my lemon and lime back there. Those are green all year round. And in fact, while these deciduous trees are asleep, these subtropical trees, all of their fruit is getting ripe. So uh, it's kind of fun when, when you live in a place like Southern California, like we live, you're able to grow and enjoy fruit in the summertime off of the deciduous trees like apples and peaches and plums. And then in the fall time, we're able to have some more apples and we can have some of those tasty pomegranates. But then in the winter time, all of the citrus is ready. And so some of these grapefruits and some of these oranges that we have here and some of those uh, mandarin oranges, they sometimes called uh, tangerines. Those are all ready at that time. And so that's, it's nice where we live, we're able to grow plants all year round. So you might be learning in your school about like somebody like Johnny Appleseed. He's really famous for planting lots of trees. And uh, you kind of have a picture in your mind of a guy with a, a kettle on his head and a bag full of apple seeds just going around throwing apple seeds everywhere he went. Um, it turns out it's a little bit different than that. There are two main ways that where you're able to uh, and how you're able to create uh, plants to grow up. Um, I actually have some apple trees here. These are small apple trees. They're pretty young and uh, they haven't grown that quickly. Um, this is a special one right here. These little apples are called Granny Smith apples. I like to use those in an apple pie a lot of the time. Well, what Johnny Appleseed did, um, John Chapman was his real name, his, his given name. And what he would do is um, he would go through and he would use, he would take those seeds that come from the inside of the apple. Have you bitten into the apple and those little brown seeds that are in there? Well, he would take those seeds and he would plant fruit trees. And then he would sell those fruit trees to people who were uh, pioneers who were heading further west. And that's how he was able to survive. There's a neat story of that guy um, and the way that he would go and he would help people out and he would let them to buy those trees so that way they could set up their, their home um, and property. A lot of the apples that they used weren't actually apples for eating like we eat today. Most of the apple trees that uh, uh, Johnny Appleseed was planting were often used for cider and cider is where they take those apples they take the juice and then they let that juice turn into um, like a cider and, and that's because they didn't have fresh drinking water as available as we do today so it's really important and helped a lot of people out so what Johnny Appleseed would do is he would take an apple seed and he'd put that in the ground because he didn't believe in a thing called grafting grafting is the thing where you take, if you like, let's say like a Granny Smith apple, you would take and cut off a little piece of this Granny Smith apple tree, and you would go and plant it on another type of apple tree that maybe you didn't like the taste of it much or the fruit didn't really work for you. And so what would happen is that, gran, uh, let's say that Granny Smith apple would then start to grow on that apple tree and it would give you Granny Smith apple fruit. <clears throat> And that's how most of the fruit trees that we buy today are called grafted, where they cut off a piece of one type of tree and put that on another tree. But Johnny Appleseed didn't believe in grafting, and he actually did plant his uh, trees from seed, 
not from not by grafting and so that's something really unique about him compared to most other people who are doing uh, that type of planting On the other side of our orchard here, we have these beautiful things called pomegranates. And these are a very unique fruit. Pomegranates, and some of these have been eaten by um, different uh, critters. Oh, I can't, oh, there's a bee inside one. Ah! Oh, there's a bee inside one. Ah! Another type of unique fruit that we have here and I'm surrounded by here are these pomegranates. And pomegranate are a wonderful fall fruit and the, and the fruit is full of, instead of like an apple where you take a bite out of an apple, the pomegranate here is surrounded by a kind of a tough skin and on the inside of it are these beautiful jewel looking things. They look like rubies and these things are called arils. Um, and each arrow, ah, I'm gonna pull off this pomegranate. Each one has um, a little tiny seed in the middle of it, surrounded by a juicy, juicy um, thing where when you bite on it, there's a burst of yummy juice and it's really tasty. Pomegranates are really, really fun and yummy to eat. But if you buy one, be careful, they can get really messy. Very juicy and messy. So normally I like to pick these out and put them in a bowl to eat them, but you can kind of just bite them off too. Mmm. This is so tasty. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna take this inside and eat it with my breakfast. So as I'm eating this pomegranate, I wanna talk about what, how do you have all of these different types of fruit? For example, how do you have, you know, a hundred different types of apple? Like some apples are red and some apples are green. Some apples are tart and some apples are sweet. And the reason for that is that just like people, um, when there are two different uh, parent plants, um, each fruit or each kind of kid that they have is a little different. If you have any brothers or sisters, just think about that. You both have the same parents, but each of you are just a little bit different than each other. Um, and that's the same thing with fruit trees. Like these two trees here, this is kind of like a plum and cherry type tree. And so when these two trees um, have a little, you know, have a seed and we put that seed in the ground and it grows up to be a tree, it's gonna have some similarities to its parents, but it's gonna be a little bit different. And that's just kind of like you. Um, you have some similarities, maybe you look a little bit, maybe you have your mom's hair color, but your dad's eye color. And that's kind of how fruit works as well, is that um, that's how all of these different types of of trees are made, the different types of apples, the different types of pears, the different types of peaches. It all has to do with planting those fruit and seeing what type of fruit come up and, um, and the different characteristics that it has. So where you might have uh, be really tall or might be really short or might have darker skin or lighter skin, um, same thing goes with fruit. Some of them are gonna be bigger fruit. Some of them are gonna be sweeter fruit. Some of them are going to be, uh, you know, grow lots and lots of fruit. And so that's how fruit trees are kind, that's how we get the different varieties of fruit, the different types of apples, the different types of pears, the different types of plums and things like that. Well, I wanna thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Busy Gardener channel. Um, hope you kiddos learned something as we walked through the orchard, some basic things about plants. And maybe you wanna get started with planting something. You can maybe plant something like a fruit tree or maybe start with something smaller, start with a vegetable maybe, or plant a seed um, in like a little pot in your garden <clears throat> and watch it grow and see what it needs when you water it or give it nutrients to eat. And so if you have any questions, be sure to uh, have your parent put those in the comments below. Um, and uh, hope that this has inspired you to see what can, what can be done when you put a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and then you come back and can enjoy some beautiful fruit and vegetables from your garden or orchard. Well, thanks for tuning in. And whether this is your first time looking at how plants work or your 500th time, until next time, stay busy. Bye.